So now we enter the woods and you'll see a shortcut scene in which Link is kind of trotting into the area kind of slowly. In any case, you want to rush forward and you want to use your spurs to jump over the fence here of the gate. In any case, you'll see that there is the Baron Spring here on the right, and this is actually where the game started with uh, Link and Russell talking. In any case, up ahead you'll come to a fork in the road. You want to actually go to the left. You want to avoid the cave on the right for now. Uh, anyways, hop off Epona here, and you can see that there is a new character here. His name is uh, Koro, and he's actually got some funny hair. It's, uh, it's like his fro has like a nest in it, and these birds will constantly land on his shoulder and in his nest or whatever. Kind of weird. In any case, he explains that there's a, a dark cave up ahead, and you know you should definitely not go alone. You should take a take a lantern. Uh, so he gives you a free lantern, what a nice guy, and uh, it's filled with lantern oil to start out with. Um, but as you use it, then the lantern oil will go away steadily. So you're going to have to have um, some empty bottles that are filled with lantern oil in order to uh, fill up your lantern in case you run out. So uh, right now we don't really need much more, and he explains that he's using this as a, a business opportunity to try and give people free lanterns in order to encourage them to come by and buy lantern oil. So kind of tricky. In any case, he, will, he tells you to light the uh, fire that is underneath his soup and uh, just as practice, so do so, and this will make him happy, and he'll say, see, you can do it. In any case, you can grab some of the soup of his if you like. Uh, you can grab it with an empty bottle, and it's called Nasty Soup, and this stuff will actually take away a heart or give you a heart. Uh, it's kind of random, so it's pretty worthless. It's too weak, and half the time it doesn't even work. It'll actually kill you, so uh, I would just avoid it. In any case, you want to head back towards the cave, you'll see that there's a little patch of grass or something underneath this gate or whatever, and it turns into a Deku Baba. And they're actually in a lot of the Zelda games. Um, but these guys, you kill them with a couple sword slashes. They're pretty easy. And uh, they drop a Deku Nut. And you can uh, slash it open or toss it at the wall. And it'll drop seeds, which you can use to fill up your slingshot. Head forward towards the cave, and you'll see that there is a, a stick on the ground. And it will tell you that it's a play sword, so that it must belong to Tallow. Once inside the cave, you want to use your lantern to light the torch that is nearby. And after that, you'll see a new enemy called a Keys. And these guys are uh, they are basically bats. And they kind of stall right before they attack you. They kind of float around you and they speed at you for a moment before they finally swoop in and try to smack you. Uh, so you can actually kind of get a good view of them first and then Z-target them and smack them. So quite easy to defeat them. Head forward, defeat the Deku Baba, and then you'll see that there's a spider web up ahead. So use your lantern to light it and this will set it on fire and it will burn away. Uh, up ahead there's another new enemy called a rat, and as one might expect, they are rats. Uh, head forward, you want to kill it, and then you can light the torch here. And I actually disabled my uh, lantern or whatever, turned it off so that I wasn't wasting lantern oil. Then you can shoot these jars that are floating strewn in between these uh, spider webs or whatever, and you can uh, gather the rupees that they drop. In any case, you want to head over to this other side here, and I'm going to get out my lantern again so I can see. There's another Deku Baba and uh, another Keys, so you can kill them. And uh, up ahead, you'll see that there's another torch here. You can light it if you want, it doesn't really matter too much. In any case, the thing that's nice to note here is that there's a small chest, and you can open it up to get a yellow rupee, which is worth 10. So we actually got quite a bit of rupees here in this little cave. If you're actually low on hearts or whatnot, you can actually slash the uh, grass that is around here. Uh, to get some more hearts. Up ahead, you take the other path uh, that forked off the road, and you can uh, light the spider web to get through this area. So now we will emerge in what is called the North Farron Woods, and right now it's all day and bright and happy, but it will actually turn kind of creepier later. Uh, it'll have purple fog throughout it. In any case, um, right now you want to head forward, you'll see a new enemy here called a Bokoblin, and these little blue guys are the weaker variety of the vocal blends. Later on we'll fight harder ones, but these guys are pretty simple. They're just kind of like these humanoid creatures that have like cudgels or swords or whatever they are, little stick things uh, that they try and smack you with. So they're pretty easy to defeat. You'd want to just simply use a couple sword slashes. If they, you know, you can also dodge out of the way and then smack them and stuff, but they shouldn't be too hard. In any case, you want to defeat them and head over to the northwest side. You'll see on your map there's a little like circle target thing that is one of your goals, apparently. So you want to head over to this uh, cave in the west side, and there's some keys along the way, and you can use spin attack is great to attack multiple keys at once. In case once you get into the cave, it's kind of dark in here, you may want to use your lantern to see. Um, but there is a, another vocal blend and then two keys in here, so defeat them all, and then you want to open the small chest in here to get a small key. Something that's different in Twilight Princess compared to other Zelda titles is that there are small keys and like locked gates and such that are in the overworld uh, it's not just in dungeons so we're we'll actually be using the small key to uh, unlock the gate that is here in Farron Woods. 
So once you've done that, you want to uh, go ahead and light the two torches nearby with your lantern, and this will make a chest appear that contains a piece of a heart. Uh, most Zelda titles will have these pieces of heart, and usually it's four pieces to make a heart container. In this game, it's actually five pieces. We'll be using them to collect uh, heart pieces or whatever, and we will get heart containers that way. That's how you increase your life. That's one of the ways. Um, now, because it's five pieces to make a heart, there's actually uh, quite a few heart pieces to find in this game, and they're actually found in the dungeons and such as well. Um, but they make a total of nine heart containers that are found throughout the game by collecting these little collectible items. So that is our first heart container to be grabbed in the game. And if you did not grab it, then uh, don't worry too much about it. You can always return to her later. When there's purple fog, you can use the lantern to head on through here, and it will disperse the fog or whatnot uh, by using the lantern. So uh, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, in any case, you want to head over to the southeast corner of the uh, Farron Woods here, and then this will lead to the next area we have to go to. Um, in any case, you can just you want to head through there, and I just kind of went straight across, and I think this is actually the path that has the most amount, number of enemies. Uh, but whatever, they're easier to defeat and all. Once you head over to this bottom corner, then you'll see that there are two more Vocoblins at once, uh, and they're pretty easy to defeat. You can use horizontal slashes to defeat them easily uh, if you're worried about it. You can also use the spin attacks, that works very well. You'll see there's a sign here, and it's actually for uh, if you need lantern oil or whatnot, then there's a little bird up your head called Trill, and uh, he has a little shop. So this is advertisement for his shop. So uh, in any case, you want to use the small key to unlock the gate over here, and then head behind it, and there's another blue vocal blend that needs to be defeated. Once you've killed that, you want to head on through to the next area. And up ahead, you'll see that there are two uh, vocal blends back here that they look like they're talking. So the vocal blends probably aren't as not intelligent as you might think, even though they kind of gurgle and stuff. They don't actually say anything really too noticeable. In any case, uh, you can defeat them both, it should be pretty easy for you. You can use a spin attack and such to uh, knock them back and do quite a bit of damage. In any case, you want to head forward, there is one more vocal blend up here, you want to defeat it. And then after that, then uh, the bird, Trill, will then call out to you and be like, Hey, buy something. I think it's kind of funny. I like how he's all... Wee -wee. So this new character is, it's never explicitly said whether he's owned by Koro or not, uh, whether it's Koro's bird, uh, but I think it's pretty obvious because he's selling lantern oil in such a specific spot. Uh, in any case, he sells lantern oil and red potion, which restores eight hearts, and then he has a money box, which uh, you can deposit money into because the bird does not uh, gather money himself. Uh, in any case, how this works is you use an empty bottle, you just swipe it over either one of those you want, and then you go deposit some money. Basically, you have to deposit at least one rupee, otherwise uh, Trill will start pecking at you every single time you enter his uh, enter his shop, and he'll call you names and such. Um, and then, as long as you deposit at least one rupee, you'll be fine. Um, if you don't deposit any rupees, then Trill will attack you and everything. But if you deposit at least one, then he'll like say you're like a cheapskate and all that kind of stuff. But if you deposit an equal amount of money or more, then he'll say, "Oh, how generous you are!" and everything. He'll be all happy with you. Uh, in any case, you want to head over to the right up ahead, and there's a small chest that has a yellow rupee in it. So you want to defeat the Deku Baba and get the yellow ruby if you so desire. After that you want to head forward and you'll see a little cinema in which it showcases uh, Talo and the monkey being caught in a cage. You want to kill the vocal blends and just slash at the cage with your sword, which kind of goes like right through them, it's kind of weird. Uh, you want to slash at the cage which will eventually break open and they will celebrate and be free. So after that you'll see a little scene in which uh, Link takes Talo home and uh, he'll thank you for helping them and he mentions that the monkey and him probably would have been eaten and he feels sad that he chased after her too because she was actually a nice monkey after all. She tried to protect him and everything. Um, so he asks you not to tell his dad, which is, uh, you know, Jaggle from the town, in any case. So he runs off. And meanwhile, uh, Russell catches up to you and he sees them. And, uh, he says that Colin told him uh, that Tallow disappeared in the woods and everything. And so he came to go help out and everything. But it looks like he apologizes that, uh, you know, that you were the one who had to go take care of it. In any case, um, he says, he mentions that Farron Woods was looking kind of funny, and he just kind of skips over it, and he says, well, I guess you're going to be going to Hyrule anyways, huh? And then he kind of makes a joke and says that, hey, if you're lucky, you might even see Princess Zelda, and then he laughs. <laughs> 